So that was your fertility at 19. This is your fertility right about now. Honey, you are going to be the big 3-5 next month. And you know what they all say about that? Maybe be open to different types of men, uh, broaden your horizons. Just want somebody to love me. And then maybe we'll commit and create new life together. Why am I starting to feel like I'm completely crazy to want that? I think we're done. Hello and welcome to this wonderful conversation. My name is Amanda Salazar. I am the head of programming and head of acquisitions at Argo. We are so excited to have these special guests with us today to talk about Freeze. Uh, please join me in welcoming the writer, director, and producer, Maya Albanese, and the star, Nora Zahetner. Hello, both of you. Thank Hello. you. Hi, hi. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to start with some questions for you, Maya, and then we'll be uh, bringing you into the conversation too, Nora, as well. So to begin, Maya, I you know we've talked about this, but for, for the sake of this conversation, I would love to kind of start at the beginning. Uh, can you tell us about the seed of the story and kind of where this project started for you? Uh, well, this story came straight from my life. Um, I wrote it kind of as, I guess, catharsis and wanting to process some of the experience I was having and feeling like some of them were just so messed up, it was funny. Um, and kind of brought that tone to the film and the writing and also just wanted to tell a story I hadn't seen before about the female experience, which is um, what it's like specifically to be a 30 something woman in this current era we're living in now where we have an incredible amount of choice. We can finally direct movies and run boardrooms and do all these things, but we still bear the majority of the burden and weight of humanity on our shoulders in terms of child rearing and child care and, and everything. And so um, I just thought, wouldn't it be nice to take a little bit of a comedic lens to that since it is actually a pretty heavy and serious topic that I take very seriously, that it would engage more people and, and men in the conversation too if I took a comedic lens to it. So that's kind of how, how it came to be. So then you got to writing the script, I would imagine. And then there comes the casting piece of this, which brings Nora into the conversation. But for you, Maya, can I start with kind of what did you know you were looking for when casting for Joy and like the lead of this film? And then kind of like what surprised you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I always, so far in my filmmaking career, obviously I, you know, hope, hopefully I'll make many more films after this, but I, um, I don't, I try not to box myself in too much when I'm writing a role and envisioning like exactly what they look like. And cause I do find actors, obviously actors, but and auditions, even in general, you find out so much about what the role can be by each actor's take on the part. Mm -hmm. um, and actors bring so much to it and they can really surprise you. And so sometimes I go into something with an idea of what I think the character is gonna be like, and then an actor has a whole different take on it and I'm blown away and it becomes that. So I wouldn't say it was fully prescribed for this film, um, for this role of joy, but uh, the most important thing to me that it was someone who is uh, very sweet and likable and um, and we yeah so that we would empathize with with her of course but also and someone who you're just like you know who would be a dick to that person <laughs> like so uh, you know that was part of it and then uh also as i mentioned um i've mentioned in interviews before is taking off of uh, Voltaire's Candide, which is one of my favorite books of all time that this movie was partially inspired by was, you know, what about a female character who's an optimist and just wants to kind of have this pretty life and have it all. And then the world just kind of takes a piss on her at every corner and what that says about the wider world around her and what's wrong with it. Um, I think that's like a really hard role to play because you are like the subject of getting all that stuff thrown at you and you have to be able to show a wide range of emotion um, and be having a very expressive face and performance. So I was looking for someone who kind of had the, the sweet disposition and gl glow, glowing on camera, but also could show like some darkness and some wide range of emotion. And yeah, Nora was like our perfect joy. <laughs> The yeah. perfect joy. I love it. Uh, so Nora, it brings me to you. Um, 
could you talk about, you know, you get this script, you're either auditioning for it, or, you know, you came to this project and kind of what drew you to this character and wanting to portray Joy? Yeah, um, I remember they sent it to me, I think it was like right before Christmas when everything was sort of shut down and and I got it and I, I, I was like, oh, what's this, you know, and then I read it and I was like, oh my God, this is so good. And I was so excited. And I immediately, I think, called my manager and I was like, yes, I, I want to do it. I'm, I love it. And so I think you got a pretty quick response from me, didn't you? Maya? I think so. I mean, yeah, I think I, every, with shorts, obviously from your point of view, Nora, and from my expectations as a filmmaker, I always just kind of assume like, oh, they probably, people probably don't want to do shorts. But the thing is like, people will do shorts if they like the script, they like the concept, yeah. they like the writing, they like the role. And it was like, just really so exciting um, that you accepted the part and so quickly. And just kind of, I, I said this earlier, but it just like renewed my faith in this art form and this business to see like the caliber of talent that was willing to do something be just because they loved the, you know, the art. Um, and yeah, so it was organic and quick feeling, I think. Yeah. yeah, I just thought it was really special and I thought it was interesting and that you could tell what a vision she had just from reading it. And obviously I related to it in ways and um, wasn't it huge stretch, <laughs> some of it. And, <laughs> and also, I mean, it's also really exciting to support female filmmakers, you know, Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And can you also talk about, you know, you read this script and you've kind of just now touched on it a little bit, but what were some of the other things that really spoke to you kind of from the storytelling perspective of like this character, like I want to do this role? Well, it was just fun because she had this kind of nice, surreal, you know, at times take on, on a very, you know, common subject that I talk about with my girlfriends a lot or, or any male friends, female friends, family. Yeah. And, um, and it's, I think it's something that is, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's, it's an interesting thing with the different generations and how it's affected us and, and specifically um, mine. I, I think I was kind of maybe on the verge of, of kind of the generation where it's just like, you can do whatever you want. You can take as much time as you want to, or or kind of being still in the one where it's like you're supposed to get married and you have this idea that, you know, by the time you're 30, you're going to be married and have kids. And I, you know, still struggle with that because I sort of sometimes I'm like, oh, that was the thing I was supposed to do. Whereas men are never told that they're supposed to do that. They never have this idea that they're supposed to do that, you know? And so there's two, two things like you're being told like, you could like, and I think she specifically says in the film, like you can have it all, like have your career, take your time yeah. um, and, or no, you're supposed to do this. And so I don't know. I just think it's always an interesting thing to explore and something that I hope, and it does seem to um, keep changing and expanding and hopefully uh, our roles are becoming less defined, you know, with, with each new generation and time. Um, but yeah, but I'm still sort of stuck in the one where you had these ideas of what you were supposed to do with your life. Right. Um, well, again, I, in the same kind of realm of approaching the story as a viewer, it was also like very struck me in the same way of like being a professional career driven woman and at a certain age. And so, and yet it is also very universal. Um, which is actually what I loved about Nora, like your embodiment of the role of Joy, because your character has agency and, but it's also dealing with like a lot of anxiety and, and or, or however you might describe kind of what she's going through. And I'm curious how you as an actor kind of like approach that, that kind of duality that is expressed within the film. Was it something that you thought about or just kind of was like there on the page and you could really kind of just embody it or, or your approach to it? I think it was just there on the page <laughs> and um, which made it much easier. And, and then it was really interesting working with all the different actors because they were all, we did get to have some rehearsals beforehand, but everybody brought such a different energy to it and just sort of moving through that. Like I felt like I got to have my own journey through that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I did definitely do preparation, but I, I don't know, it was, <laughs> I said it wasn't a big stretch to, to think about what that meant to her. And I think a lot of us has been there in our dating lives where you, 
you try to keep this optimism, you know, and, and you go into something with the, with the best hopes and you try and then it doesn't work. And then you're kind of like, okay, well, let me pivot this way to this type of person. And then you're like, well, that didn't work. Let me pivot this way. And you keep kind of like going like that. And I feel like that's kind of what she's doing. She's kind of like, oh, maybe you No, okay. That didn't, maybe you, maybe you, you know, and it's just like slowly, like just sort of descending into madness at the same time, you know, right. and anxiety. Yeah. So. Oh. Joy. Well, speak going really back. Good <laughs> um, I mean, so speaking of that kind of like the other cast, I would also love to hear Maya from if you could talk about casting the other roles, like when they kind of came, you know, when they uh, were kind of confirmed, so to speak, and was was Nora already like on board and just really that process. I'd love to hear kind of the casting side as you're kind of finding the other characters that are going to counter Joy through her through her journey. Yeah, I mean, I think we, it was I'm trying to think who, I don't actually remember the order of everything. I think, I, I do think Nora and Adrian were our first two actors cast, I believe. Um, and we definitely had some ideas of kind of the types of actors and we wanted to not have an all white cast and some things like that, obviously. Um, so we did want it to reflect the wider world. Um, but I, I really feel like it was just kind of so organic and came together so quickly, the whole thing. It was like uh, just one after the other. And um, we didn't end up casting anyone from auditions, I don't believe, because uh, we kind of got our cast in. And um, yeah, and that was that. And it worked out really great. I don't know what else to say about that. That's not a very exciting answer. <laughs> no, I just, I think there's a process piece of this too. That's like the reality of how things get cast is really important to know. Um, and then it sounds like you, Nora, like you get to, you got to really kind of, you know, you were just saying that joy got to, you got to um, kind of uh, experiment by off of these, you know, work with these actors in ways that I think seem to propel the role well, correct? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, did you want to expand on that anymore? Or? No, 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 okay. it's, it's easy because I think that, um, you know, she does have agency and, and she does still drive the story, but I feel like so much of her interactions are driven by who she's encountering. So it was kind of nice to just be able to go in and be open and just see what, what people were bringing and just sort of absorb that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And so, so kind of speaking to that, I think a lot about this film in terms of just like the tone, there's a, and that goes to the satire you've mentioned a lot, Maya. And also there's just, you know, again, which I do have a question very specifically around like costume and makeup and the kind of like actual set. And I'm just curious with this because, um, it, it, it sets such an interesting tone, just obviously not only thematically, but just like the world of the film. And I'm curious how you each kind of manage tone, like as a director, it, you know, even if that's like an onset thing or also like within the film. And then Nora is just like kind of maintaining that tone throughout the film. But either, Maya, do you want to start? Sure. Uh, well, tone is very tricky when you are doing dark comedy or tragic comedy or whatever we want to call it. I would say that's probably the most challenging part of making this film was the line you walk tonally because you do have different actors bringing different types of performances, a range of performances. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think, you know, for something like this, that's kind of comedy and dark and has magical realism in it and everything, you kind of have to just let it a little bit figure out what it wants to be on its own. Like, I don't think I necessarily sat down and said like, this is exactly what the tone is. And then on set, this is like, I think like a lot of it was like figuring out what it wanted to be organically. Um, and then the most sort of honing in happens in post-production. So, um, you know, there is a whole other film in the footage that we didn't cut, which is like just straight up comedy you know, where we're all in stitch at Kel Mitchell's being so funny, we're all in stitches and, and that didn't, doesn't make it in because it doesn't tonally align with some of the other things in the film. It's fantastic. It's just different tone. So um, recognizing what the tone is, is important. Um, 
but yeah, I just think, I, I do think with dark comedy is specifically like my favorite genre because I think it's most reflective of real life. We have drama and comedy and darkness and lightness in our lives, but it is a, a, the hardest type of film to make, I think. <laughs> it's like, you could go really dark or you could go really slapstick funny. And then there's this like this whole spectrum in between. And the choices you see in all the films you watch are just so heavily debated by filmmakers, I think, of what you're seeing and how far it pushes in those directions. And for you, Nora, like kind of how you approach tone, and then I'm curious, maybe your even thought to Maya's comment and how she, you know, on set or like what the, the end tone result was like for you. Um, I think for Joy uh, specifically, it was important for me to just be really grounded and to have like emotional truth there because I think that's where comedy can come from like it, it, it's sort of more with her like a situational aspect as opposed to like you know she doesn't really have like jokes right. so so I thought kind of the straighter everything is and the more you sort of just feel for her like the funnier and darker and sadder it it is mm -hmm. um and yeah, I mean, Maya was great. She just like really let me play and she'd come over and she'd have great ideas for for like kind of specific things. And, and we do that and, um, but it was kind of just, I mean, and we definitely played, or I tried to give her options as far as like tone, you know, for it being a bit more broad or it being very small and, and just trusted her to sort of sort that out. <laughs> <laughs> um because because like she said it, it was you know everybody has different styles and and it could go bigger it could go smaller and and yeah so I just wanted her to have all the options great um because I, I did want to then talk to you about the costuming the hair the makeup the kind of journey that joy takes and it uh, from a visual standpoint also seemed very fun. Like I know the situations weren't as such, but there seemed to be a lot of great, uh, you know, set design and, and, you know, kind of given and care given to especially joy. Can you talk about that experience, Nora, and like kind of how that influenced the character or, or again, just like the hair and makeup aspect of, of, of joy? Well, I've never gotten to just like look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> for so long in a movie it was so much fun to just have mascara running down my face and not care about looking pretty or you know and and just kind of like I really enjoyed that <laughs> um uh but no I mean I think that my had a really specific idea of of the character's journey and what that uh looked like physically so that was that was really her I, I didn't have a lot to do with any of that I don't think as far as um um she was very good at communicating that with our hair and makeup and in wardrobe department and um but yeah it was it was really fun to to kind of get to just allow her or me to just evolve into just this kind of giant mess um she gets there pretty quickly it felt like I was mostly in yeah, the, the sad joy for most of the scenes. You only get one scene where you actually are like done up, which is the scene she gets dumped. Yeah. <laughs> and, it all goes down and that was the first day, wasn't it? Yeah, that's what I, I was saying that earlier. Is like um, there was some debate over whether we were going to kill Nora by doing the first day of like on the lawn and the sprinklers with the rain and like everything on the first day of shooting. <laughs> It's a real hard entry in. Yeah, we had we had one scene with Adrian, which yeah, he he breaks up with me, but I'm like dressed up, and it seems like Joy's gonna have a great life and a great time in the short. And then they threw me in front of the house on the couch with the sprinklers, with and it was raining actually too. Oh my gosh! Do you remember that? Yeah, I mean, I'll never forget that. It was like right on cue. She was in the puffy pink dress and it started actually raining, which like, of course, in Los Angeles happens five days a year. Yeah. <laughs> we actually have on like, you know, on like the lav bike that was still turned on. Adrian's like inside the house of the lav bike on. He goes, he goes, he goes, is it actually raining? He's like, man, <laughs> like, I feel bad for her. Like, it's cold out there. <laughs> like, just like, 
wow, who is just like really put you through a lot to get that shot. But that's my favorite shot in the film actually is the wide, the ultra wide on the sofa with the sprinklers and the rain, the turkey and the pink dress, because it's just so great to convey the tone of the film. Yeah, it's incredible. I was gonna say that's movie magic, man. Actual real rain captured and you stuck through it, Nora. That's pretty remarkable. Um, and uh, I mean, so going, I, I do wanna hear a little bit from you, Maya. We talk, I mean, Nora just mentioned that, you know, you really had a hand in all of this, but did you have like clear ideas of exactly kind of like what joy would be kind of wearing and and maybe the the journey with makeup or and did that change when you had cast nor like was that kind of already in your head before or did that you know alter a little bit once you brought in the cast for it well the whole vision for the chronology of the film and that plays into everything that was chosen especially for the costume and hair and makeup design is that she starts out two weeks ago when she's still in a good state and then through the flashbacks over time, she it gets increasingly dark and her psychology, you know, deteriorates as part of that. And um, some of the things I knew for sure were that I wanted her to feel like a relic of the older generation in the first happy flashback. And actually Nora touched on this earlier, which is a really important point to the script is that I, I specifically feel like women in their thirties right now who are probably mostly millennials, I guess, um, we are kind of caught between two generations because our parents really emphasize marriage and children and all those things. And then the people younger than us seem like just totally liberated from that. And we're kind of caught in between the two. And so I wanted her to feel like a relic of her parents in that opening flashback with the breakup scene, thus the sort of 1950s motif you see going on there. <laughs> And then as she uh, deteriorates, her outfits would sort of get more and more muted, the color palettes. Um, I described it as like starting out with piggy pink and gradually becoming more muddied pink, like as if we were throwing dirt on the pink tones. And that was done in lighting and the color grade and post-production, but it was also done through her wardrobe for sure. And then the obvious um, deterioration was depicted with, with hair and makeup, just like and that was a huge thing matching because you're not shooting a film in the order that it's written usually making sure that when we showed up to set that day she was the right amount of like melted mascara comparing to where she was in her psychological journey so it was it was all very well thought out in advance and um an important part of conveying her interior psychology with her external appearance absolutely um, and you had mentioned Maya, like the, you know, that outdoor scene being your favorite, but Nora, I'm curious, what is, was like a favorite scene for you to take on? I don't know, they were all fun in, in their own way. Um, I'm trying to think of what was the most satisfying. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, I liked the stuff in the, when I actually go to the clinic, I had fun doing that stuff because she's pretty, you know, messed up at that point. So um, I loved all of it though. It was all, it was all fun in its own way. Mm -hmm. And even the sitting on the couch in the rain, I mean, I was a little miserable, but I also understood that it was a really great shot. And so I, I still enjoyed it in a way. <laughs> That's amazing. I will have the first time I saw the film, I've now seen it a couple of times, but the first time I saw it, like your scene where you get to scream at just feels like every woman's rate. Like I it just feel yeah. very, like very authentic. I've definitely done that. And it's, it's also like the fantasy of doing it in a public place if you've done it. <laughs> On. So um, I was going to say nicely done for that. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, that, 
that was sort of uh, gratifying. I, I think I lost my voice afterwards, but it was because I was kind of like my I have like three of these in me, <laughs> and that is it. They gave me a lot of ice cream, so that was nice. Um, that was at the end of a really long day, and I I think I did enjoy that scream quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's her actually screaming. <laughs> no, good. no fully there. Can you also, Nora, would you mind talking a little bit about, you know, Maya, you've referenced kind of the, you know, the maybe for people that do know that often films are not shot in sequence. This was not shot in sequence. Can you talk about that for you as an actor and kind of your approach and um, again, what that process was like for you, um, knowing that it wasn't like chronological as we saw it? Yeah. Um yeah, it was sort of a fun, a, a tricky one, I guess, on this one, just because the extremes are so extreme with her, and we, and it was, you know, so mixed up between, like, sometimes we'd have, like, the scene where she was a little bit more normal, and then, and we'd have to, like, clean me up really fast, and then go back to, and because it's a short, you're just on such a tight schedule, so it's kind of, like, a bit, um, frenetic, but, uh, no, I mean, I guess I'm just so used to it. I, I can't even imagine what it would be like to shoot something in sequence. Mm -hmm. It was nice that we got to shoot the first scene first. So that was, that was something. There you go. Um, yeah. Maya, you often have talked about, like you call them out of like Easter eggs throughout the film. And I'm curious if, and these just little moments that if you wouldn't mind, you can expand upon that. Um, I'll just like leave that there. But I'm curious, like Nora, if you were like clued in on those, added your own, like, because the film is like very layered from every sense of production. I would even say like the fact that her name is Joy um, is one in itself. So could you talk a little bit about that, Maya, and the kind of the process of doing that? And then I would love to hear Nora, if you knew about it or added any of your own. Uh, yeah, I mean, some of them are written into the script and were very much just like part of the, like with the bookstore scene, like it was always supposed to be, the bookstore scene is always supposed to be like, uh, patronizing. Everything was about patronizing and mansplaining. And so the bookstore is called the old man bookstore and the books are, and the dad is father time and the books are romance novels written by men. And, and the whole thing is just one big Easter egg really. Um, but yeah, Easter egg is just like, I mean, if you watch the film a couple of times, there are some even more hidden ones than that. Um, and just really thinking out every single detail in the production design, or like, for example, the fact that like the pinks on Nora get more and more muddied or her nails get more and more chipped. And so like anything that was a symbol of femininity, I wanted to deteriorate throughout the chronology. Um, like, I don't really like the color pink because for whatever reason, but I think a lot of it has to do with like, it seems like a little bit a color of oppression for women. Um, and so I, yeah, an Easter egg might be just the fact that pink was used only in a satirical way in the film. Um, but yeah, I think it was, I'm trying to think of something. Um, I mean, there's obvious ones and more hidden ones, but yeah, I just like want it to feel like everything was playing into the satire every little piece. Yeah, it's very fun to watch. The more you watch it, you're going to find more, uh, which is always so delightful. And so, yeah, I'm curious, Nora, if you uh, if you had participated in this, knew about it, kind of have your Easter <laughs> eggs in it as well. No, I didn't. <laughs> I don't really, I mean, I think that I just sort of focus on what I'm doing, I guess, unless it's something that she wants me to try and, you know, I need to be part of, then I don't really yeah no. I think there are things that I didn't even notice until I saw it or or I would read it a few times and then I would read it and I would see something new and be like oh right because I, I think a lot of times when I read a script I'm so focused on on a, you know on, on my character and what's happening yeah. that the details honestly escape me um and so it's, it's always fun for me like I do this now whenever I do a job I read the script as much as possible before I start. Somebody um, suggested that a long time ago and it, I find it really helpful because you get something new every time and you start to create your own things that maybe don't actually even exist in the script when you do that enough times. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. Oh, I like that. And did you like in kind of speaking of that when you kind of 
I guess kind of, I guess what I'm trying to say is when you kind of watched that film for the first time, cause you mentioned it, what was that experience like for you? Um, now kind of like seeing from the script that you've read so many times to the screen and your performance. I hate watching myself. So the first time I watch anything with myself in it, it's to be completely honest, I, I, I'm just like, ah, like it, it doesn't matter what it is. I just sort of have a, <laughs> panic attack so I have to watch it a couple of times and then I but then when I watched it it's like this is great I did a wonderful job and and I yeah but it's so it's so hard to, to um I don't know it's it's interesting I would imagine I was going to say seeing yourself doing that but I would you know just saying that you really you are that that character feels very much like uh, is very came to life because of you and feels very real um mm -hmm. and like with that i would like to kind of end this with a more like broad question around because again the the platform argo that the film is going to be streaming on is for short films um and i'm curious for both of you like what is it that draws you to the short film format as an actor as a filmmaker who wants to start now I go, Nora. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, um, it's just storytelling. Mm. You know, it 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 really is about the story because um, otherwise, there's not a huge advantage, you know, to me doing them at this point. Um, but if I get to work with somebody amazing who has a vision and I. Uh, and is telling this incredible story, then it's so exciting to me. And, and I get to sometimes do roles that maybe people wouldn't have seen me as normally. And, mm -hmm. and so it's, it's fun for that too. Absolutely. I mean, I, I don't, there's probably no question of why short films are great for filmmakers and directors. Um, they're, you know, possible to execute. <laughs> on a lower budget. And so it allows us as an entry point to creativity and experimentation and art. And um, yeah, I think, I mean, I think shorts are the greatest. I wanna do shorts forever. I don't think there's any point at which you get too far in your career that you shouldn't do shorts because they're like a playground in which you can test ideas. And um, I don't know, I think, uh, you know, to be honest, I find writing a short harder than writing a feature and telling a story in under 15 minutes is really difficult. Uh, that, you know, a story that has a beginning, middle, end, and that hooks people. And um, I think it's a it's challenging. And if you can do it in a short format, well, um, it's just, again, it's a great testing ground um, and a way to hone your skills, you know, before you make something longer form. Um, and then also, yeah, just like, I mean, I, I really think some of the access we had to such incredible talent like Nora and to the VFX house Ingenuity who did those incredible VFX and everything is because a short is short. And so <laughs> you're asking people to show up for one day, two days, five days, um, not 38 days. Um, you actually are more likely to, to get people involved if you're asking for less of a time commitment. And that was Wait, something- no, that, Sorry. I just wanna say it's also a testament to your talent because otherwise people, even if it's a short period of time, aren't gonna give up their time if it's not something that they think is going to be something great and, and is exciting. Well, thank you, <laughs> I appreciate that. I mean, yeah, I guess obviously at first, if you have a script people like, and if you have you know, something good, then, then the time commitment is lower. And then, yeah, it's not like just the time is the only, variable and actors choosing to participate. But I do think, yeah, I just think there's the entry point for everyone involved is lower to a point where you can create some really amazing things. And, and, and just to, you know, not to get on the soapbox about this, but I'm like really, really passionate as Nora is about like female filmmakers and getting different types of voices into the director chair and telling stories about things we haven't seen before. And that includes non-white voices too. And I just think, unfortunately, the way the system has always been, it's so hard to get a movie made anyways, no matter who you are, but especially if you're a woman or a person of color. And so 
the short films are where all the emerging creators with different kinds of stories and angles and points of view and stories untold are, are is in the short form category. So, I mean, if you want to find the next fill in the blank or um, something in more inventive than maybe what we've been seeing for the last 100 years, I feel like short film programs at festivals are where, where it's at. And, um, and that is going to be, you know, a great funnel from the short film festivals to, to a place like Argo, which is a platform for short. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, and I, again, I, I appreciate you said that about, again, being uh, kind of broadening the field of like a diversity and different people behind the camera and, 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 and joining those projects, because that's definitely, you know, key to changing the industry. So, um, and again, this like film can ever, as you, you've said, you've said before, reaches all audiences. And I think that's, what's so great about it. That's a testament to the filmmaking and the team and the, every, every creative piece here that, you know, put their, um, hard work and effort into it. And it definitely succeeds. So, uh, with that, thank you both for joining me. Thank you both for having a little conversation about freeze. Uh, we're so excited to have the film on Argo, um, and really hoping that audiences, you know, watch it once, watch it many times to find all those little Easter eggs that my, you've talked about and, uh, really enjoy your performance, Noah, Nora, cause it's really remarkable. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.